So this intellectual, this professor, ends up in this work camp with Reb Mendel for the fastest Lubavitcher Chassid. And Reb Mendel is telling this story over breakfast years later. And he says, this professor asked me, he said, I've noticed that many of the men are demoralized to the extent that they actually die. He says, healthy men who do not directly die from, from starvation or from disease or from, from, from an act of violence, they simply lose their will. They get up off the cot in the morning. And when we come back from our day of slave labor, they're dead. He says, with you, I see the opposite. You have this joie de vivre and nothing gets you down. And I can't, in fact, you, you inspire everyone else. I can't put my finger on what's the difference. So Reb Mendel tells this professor, he says, let me explain something to you. These guys that you're watching, that you see them uh, dropping like flies, they're Cossacks. You know what a Cossack is? I mean, you're talking about a real, not refined people, okay? Um, Reb Mendel said, for a Cossack, life is three things. His horse, his rifle, and his bottle of vodka. That's life. Now, when they send them to this gulag, they lose those three things. But that's life for them. So by losing those three things, they've lost their lives. And it's only an inevitability. Sooner or later, the body is going to get the memo from the brain, you're dead already. And when that happens, they don't get up off the cot in the morning. And when we come back, they're dead. Because they already lost their lives by coming here. And Mendel says, but you should understand something about me. Really, my life is not so different here than it was at home. Now, the man didn't see his wife and children for 14 years. He was, I mean, he was a slave laborer. He was abused. He was beaten. He says, my, my life is not so different. What's my life? He says, like back at home. I see the sun is about to go down. So you have to pray. You have to, it's mincha. Time for mincha. It's an afternoon prayer. Well, here it's pretty similar. You see the sun's going down. It's the same sun, it's the same type of scenario, it's an afternoon. You have to pray, Mincha, the afternoon prayer. Now, it's a little different because there's no shul, and I can't actually stop chopping wood. They were chopping wood in the forest. He says, because if, uh, if I stop working, they'll shoot you dead. So while I'm doing the work, I silently, I pray the afternoon prayer to myself. In fact, I think to myself, you know, in all the years since creation, I bet you nobody ever prayed to God standing on this spot. And I think to myself, you know, my life's not so different. Back home, I tried my best to serve God. Over here, I try my best to serve God. So what did they take from me? Nothing. Nothing. 